Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aitken and on this show each week we take a look at some upcoming races in Hong Kong and try to isolate an aspect of the race which might help us to find the winner. Well the first race we're going to take a look at on Sunday is race two where our winning factor is the tempo. Now this is a stock standard sort of uh, class four but a competitive uh, betting affair with a few chances and uh, from the top Oscar Glory has been racing well. Uh, Light of Wanshi, he looked unlucky last time out. Darcy Joy, a last start winner. Placlone, he just missed last start and is stepping up in distance here. And Go Go 16, another horse racing well and knocking on the door in some of his recent starts. But I think the major focus here from punters will be on Zach Purton's ride, Light of Wan Shi, and the horse that he jumped off to ride him, Oscar Glory. So we're going to take a look here at both of those horses, in fact, in race 117. Uh, Light of Wan Shi, he's in red colours with a light blue cap and gets back in the field, while Oscar Glory in uh, white, blue and red, on this occasion for Matthew Poon, takes his usual spot on the front of the race from gate one. And you see on the heat map here that uh, Oscar Glory really has uh, a bit to do in the first half of the, this race, and particularly through the second section when uh, it's he himself who overdoes it and he lifts the tempo up from sharp to actually quite brutal. In fact, uh, by my reckoning, about six lengths faster than uh, normal. So Light of Wan Shi, meanwhile, saves his petrol back in the field and uh, turning into the straight, things are looking good until he hits traffic because uh, he gets behind a couple of horses here who are weakening and that takes him out of the race. They take him back through the field while the race gets away from him. Oscar Glory, well, he continues to fight strongly until the last bit, despite that uh, tough run early. And Light of Wan Shi, when he gets out, he's running on, but the game is all over. Well, there's no doubt there that Light of Wan Shi should have won that race, uh, but it was a meritorious run from Oscar Glory. Now, next time, connection swapped from Matthew Poon to Zach Purton, but I think it's fair to say that uh, there wasn't much of a benefit gained uh, for Oscar Glory in his next run. That's what we're going to take a look at now. And this is race 151. And uh, this features a few others from uh, Sunday's race as well. But in those same colours, this time drawn out wider, Purton has Oscar Glory out quickly and working across to be with the lead again. And although he hands up the front and the initial pace isn't quite as tough, it does crank up again during the mid-race sections. And Purton tries to cuddle Oscar Glory a little bit, uh, but the gelding gives a good kick when he goes for him, momentarily looking like he's going to be the one. But that uh, extra mid-race effort, once again, tells late in the piece. And this time it's Darcy Joy who gets the better of things. So we've seen how well Oscar Glory fights after he's been under pressure for quite a bit of the race. Well, I think Sunday we're going to see how well he fights when there isn't so much pressure on him because when we look at the map this time for Oscar Glory, of course he has another wide draw but there doesn't look to be as much pressure. He'll be going forward, I think we'll see good health sailing forward from the outside barrier and possibly smart folks looking a pace influence lower in the draw but the tempo really doesn't look that strong this time. For that reason I suspect uh, Zach Purton, who is a very aware tactician in races, will also attempt to have Light of Wanshi a bit closer than he was in the video we saw, but he still looks likely to be giving away a start. But the tip in race two, Oscar Glory, his winning factor, the tempo. I really don't think there's much between him and Light of Wanshi in terms of their talent for this race, but we've seen Oscar Glory very brave when things went against him. I think you'll get a few things in his favour this time and he can keep something for the finish. The other race I want to examine is race 10 and our winning factor here is up in class. Well, this is a very decent class too to end things on Sunday with uh, talented horses like Master Montaro who had no luck last time. An interesting newcomer headed towards the derby in Senor Toba and the three horses rising in class here, My Sugar from Jimmy Ting's yard, Tony Cruz trained I'm a single man and the horse he beat last start, John Size trained Blaze Warrior. And it's uh, really the horses that uh, are rising in grade here that uh, get my attention, particularly uh, Blaze Warrior and My Sugar. 
And this is race 102 in grey colours, purple cap. My Sugar winning in class three for Zach Purton. And there's a lot to like about this win. Now he pushes forward early as is his usual style. And as he also often does, he wants to go faster than the rider does in the second section. So uh, despite the tempo already being quite solid, you can see he's traveling quite strongly. He comes back to Zach a little from the 800, but has certainly done his share of work uh, holding the front yet keeps finding more for Purton and sent to the line. He's too good for another horse in very good recent form, Master Hero. Now this race is also in class three we're going to look at, and this is Blaze Warrior returning for the new season. And this is the first time that he met defeat at the hands of I'm a single man. Here in green and yellow colors, Blaze Warrior settling past midfield. And there's I'm a single man. He's in the tangerine and purple quarters, white cap, and he has to do it tough here, we're sitting wide and facing the breeze after coming across from that outside barrier. Now the pace stops and starts a little here, but Marira gives Blaze Warrior a great ride, sliding out three wide before the home straight and into a striking position where he's tracking up behind I'm a single man. So he's had all the advantages in the run over his rival and looks the winner at the 200 metres as he makes his bid. But a very brave run from I'm a single man. Now he was having his third run back this time as opposed to Blaze Warrior having his first. And I'm a single man's fitness counts as he's able to fight him off and win. Now I would expect that uh, with the benefit of that race we'll see a fitter version of Blaze Warrior this time. And that's why I think he can turn the tables on I'm a single man because when we take a look at the map the problem for I'm a single man this time looks to be he'll have to do it all the hard way again, while Blaze Warrior and the on-pace runner My Sugar map to get better runs. So we're down to My Sugar and Blaze Warrior, and I don't think there's a great deal between them, so what do we do as betters? We look for the value. And the graphic I'm going to show you compares the value to be found from the three stables uh, sending these horses out. Now, uh, I've only used the last four seasons because that's when Jimmy Ting's uh, training career started. But you can see he does give betters an edge. Uh, comparing the three trainers over the same period, Size and Cruise, two giants of the Hong Kong scene, they've had a lot more runners rising in class and more winners. But the up-and-comer Ting is the one showing the best edge over the market for punters. So the tip in race 10, My Sugar his winning factor up in class. Of course, there are three runners up in class here, but I think we've seen from these statistics that Jimmy Ting's runners offer the best value for punters, and I think that might be the way to go. Well, that's it from the winning factor for this week. Enjoy your racing Sunday. We'll see you next time.